Hello, everybody. Welcome. Come on in. I can see the numbers shooting up already. You might notice we've got a new friend with us today, as we mentioned, but we will introduce everybody properly once all of our attendees are in and settled. All right. I can see people beginning to find the chat. Oh, that's Lizzie. <laughs> Here we come. Come on in, everybody. Welcome back. It's lovely to have everybody back joining us again. I hope you've had a wonderful week with many adventures. Let's see. Hello, Ollie. Hello, Jenna and Lilia. Oh, Jenna and Lilia. I recognise those names. We might have something to show from them later. Hello, Lauren, Zoe, Alyssa. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello, Elliot. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Perfect. All right, so we're still climbing in number, so we'll give it a little bit longer. Hello, Amelia. Hello, Ellie, Ruby. Hi, hi, hi. Great. A little bit longer, just letting everyone in. I hope you're comfortable. I hope you've got your speakers up. You can see us nice and clearly. Ready for a game? Hello. Bob says, hi, Lizzie is back. Yay. Isn't that nice? Ah, uh, thanks. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Florence. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Pam. Lovely to see you too. Well, see you. We can't see you, but we know you, Pam. So it's lovely to hear from you. Hiya, Aidan. Michael and Charlotte. Hello. Wonderful. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. Okay. I think, Lizzie, anyone else who's joining will still be able to come in, so they're not going to miss out too much, but we could probably start our introduction. So hello, everyone. I will pass to Lizzie and we can begin our session. Perfect. Okay, hi everyone. Nice to uh, see you all. Say hello in the chat. Welcome to Explorers at Home. It is at 4 pm every day. Uh, well, not every day, sorry, every Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Lizzie and I'm joined by Josie, who might be to my side. Hello. Notice we have an extra person here today, a guest star, and it's Katie. Hi, Katie. Hiya. <laughs> so I'm going to pass you back over. Back over to Josie and she will give you all the techie things you need to know if you're new um, and to remember if you've been here before and then we'll get started. Josie over to you. Perfect thanks Lizzie. So I'm going to do this really quickly because so many people have been before but if you're new just so you know this session is being recorded and it will be put on our website and made public shortly so that anyone who misses the session today can watch it whenever they like um, and if you have to go halfway through you can always catch up with the rest later too. You are muted and your cameras are off. We can't see you, we can't hear you, but you can still get in touch. At the bottom of your screen, you should, you should see a speech bubble. And if you tap that or click it, then you could uh, message us in the chat. It's just sending us messages. If you say a little hello in there, so we know that you're able to hear us and see us, that would be perfect. And if there are any problems, if you have any tech issues, you can always just let me know and I'll do what I can to help you as well. So um, there will also be some polls, which are like questions that pop up on the screen, but we'll explain how those work when we come to the first one to save us some time. And that is all I need to say. So Lizzie, back to you. Nice. OK, so as you guys know, each week we have a different theme and this week's theme is powerful plants. Now, we couldn't we wouldn't be here without plants and so would so many other animals. So we want to celebrate them. And the reason why we have Katie here today is because she is the hedgerow queen. She absolutely loves hedgerows, knows lots about them. So we thought this is the perfect session for her to meet everyone. And the reason why we want to talk about hedgerows or have a game about hedgerows, shall we say, is because they are the most amazing and underappreciated places where plants grow. They're incredible. Um, and in fact, there's so many plants that grow there. How many grow there, Katie? Well, you'll probably be surprised to hear that you can actually find over 500 different plant species in a hedgerow. So that's not just the plants that make up the hedgerow, so those kind of tree and woody species, but also all those beautiful wildflowers and different plants that grow in the margin around the base, and even those other ones that are twisting and winding their way through the hedgerow as well. Wow, oh my goodness, that's incredible. So because of that, obviously lots of creatures are going to love hedgerows and that's where they will live or at least spend part of their day. So our game is all about creatures and things that you might find in a hedgerow. So I'm going to try and share my screen now. As you know, if you can't, um, can't see it, just let us know. So I hope it will come up for you now. Hey, 
Katie, I've got a question from the chat for you just while we get into the game. Eleni, okay. Eleni has asked, what is a hedgerow? And that's a really good question because it's something we might be quite familiar with, but it's also something we might not know yet. So have you got a simple explanation for us? Yeah, what a fantastic question. So a hedgerow is a line of trees or woody species that historically have been used almost like a living fence. So, and either those can just be all planted in a line or sometimes we manage them and lay them over so they get even thicker as well. Are they kind of like boundaries around fields sometimes and along maybe roads? Is that where we might see them? Definitely, but also a lot of people have hedgerows in their gardens as well, or you can see them in the parks as well. Amazing. Eleni says, thanks for answering my question, Katie. Isn't that lovely? Very polite. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's play a game, everybody. So this week's game is hiding in hedges. And so a picture will come up and it is either a zoomed in picture or a question about what the picture is. And a poll will appear with the question for you. Now the poll that will come up will have lots of different answers. So click on the one that you want and then the submit button. So we'll have the first one come up now. So there's some feet on the screen there and hopefully a poll will appear for you. So the question is, who is this? Who are these feet? Do they belong to the blackbird, the sparrowhawk, the robin, or the duckling? So you click on the answer that you think, and then click the blue button at the bottom that says submit. Amazing. So if you have any problems with this, if it covers the screen and you can't see the picture anymore, then you can drag the top of that little box and you can move it around and push it out of the way. That's fine. You can also close it when you're ready because it won't cause a problem if you just send your, you send your results in and then you can close it. That's absolutely fine. We can see your results pouring in. If you can't see the poll, if it doesn't appear for you, or if you just want to tell us what you think, then you can type your results or your answers or your guesses in the chat and we can see them there. And that makes us really happy because I love to see what you're all thinking about. And if you're watching us back on the recording, then the polls won't appear for you either. But don't worry because we will always read out all of the options and the questions every time anyway. So you can always just play along whenever. All right then, let's carry on. I think we've got everybody voted now. So here are the results. Ooh, okay. Ooh. So there's a mix of results, but most of you said sparrowhawk or blackbird. Now, what is the answer, Katie? The answer is blackbird. <laughs> so well done if you got that right, guys. What a gorgeous blackbird that is. What do they, when do you find them in hedges, Katie? That's a really good question. So these are probably one of the most likely birds you'll see breeding in a hedgerow. So building a nest and there being chicks in there, and you might be able to hear them sort of tweeting away very quietly in the hedgerow in spring and summer. But not only do they use the hedgerows to breed, they're obviously using them to find food and shelter, but the males like this lovely black bird here, because the females are actually brown, the males will use a hedgerow to sing really loudly and beautifully from. So especially in the evenings or afternoons, you might hear a blackbird singing its heart out from the top of a hedge. Oh, amazing, lovely. I do love to hear a blackbird song or any bird song to be, yeah, to be honest, I'm happy. <laughs> um, the next one is, there's a picture of a leaf on the screen and the queen mm. is, Katie, do you wanna go for this one? Yes, yeah, so what type of plant is this that, a little hint for you, you might find in a hedgerow? So is it an oak, a willow, a chestnut or a hazel? If you're not sure guys, give it a guess either way. We are always happy for people to have a guess. If you're not sure, give it a try. Maybe you've learned that at school or at home or maybe you have no idea. <laughs> now, I have to say, I am so impressed with people's answering for this because we've got one result with nearly everybody voting for it. And I am so surprised how well people are doing. So I think that's everybody. Last chance. Three, two, one. Let's have a go. Right. There's the result. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Incredible. 
So most of you guys said Hazel and are they right, Katie? They are right. I'm so impressed. And I saw some people saying in the chat as well that they've got loads in their garden and you're so lucky. I would love to have lots of hazel in my garden. <laughs> but obviously those were the hazel leaves that hopefully we'll start seeing coming out again later in the spring. But if you wanted to look out for them at the moment, if you can see in the bottom right there, those are hazel catkins and they're out at the moment. So maybe when you're next out on your walk, you go out looking for those. <laughs> Not only that, I think if you take a closer look, there's um, Josie's favourite little thing there. It's a little <laughs> flower and it's tiny and red and it kind of looks like a, kind of to me it looks like a little urchin or something that's just coming out in the ocean. I, don't know. I always think of them like tentacles and they don't look like flowers at all, do they? But that is the flower of the tree. So one of my favourite things this time of year is to go sort of dingling the little catkins because it's really fun and going looking to see if I can spot any of those tiny tiny flowers they're nearly done now so this is your last chance if you want to go and have a look oh that's a good challenge okay next question guys is there's a zoomed in picture there for you again and the question is what is this is it a leaf is it a moth is it a bat or is it a bird Ooh, it's a tough one. We like to challenge people here, Katie. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're too easy. <laughs> this is I like it. Chance. We have a big mix. <laughs> I like a challenge. It's good. It is a really weird picture, I have to say. It almost looks like a slice through a tree. I, I don't even know what I'd be getting for this one. So good luck, everybody. It's really cool, though, isn't it? Because it makes you take notice of all those little details that you don't necessarily see when you look at it as a whole. That's really mm -hmm. true. Lauren says it's a hard one, and I think I agree. All right, are we nearly ready? I think we're done, let's go. Okay, so um, pretty much all the answers were chosen, but the one with the most votes is a bat. And are they right, Katie? They are. Ooh, well done if you got that, guys. Well um, done, everyone. These guys anywhere even by a hedgerow or just anywhere I'd love to see a bat flying about oh, I love seeing bats flying and interestingly this is a greater horseshoe bat and they are even more reliant on hedgerows than your average bat species that's because like all bats they use echolocation which is when they send high pitched frequencies out into the landscape and how that bounces back to them off objects is how they navigate so they really need things like hedgerows in the landscape to help them build up that picture while they're flying around and hunting but the thing about greater horseshoe bats is they actually have a weaker echolocation so they're even more reliant on those features in the countryside so a really good network of hedgerows in the countryside really helps them to navigate their way through when they're hunting and out flying around at night time amazing it's kind oh, of I... like if i ran around screaming and anything that i heard an echo coming off i i try and dodge it so i don't run into it is that is that right katie yeah or eat it, <laughs> or eat it. <laughs> amazing what a life <laughs> i have to say i do love bats because even though you think of them as being in the countryside you do get them in like towns as well and things so they're one of those cool species that you get to see at night they're awesome. Okay, right, next one, guys, is this one. Katie, do you want to read this one out? Yes. Okay, so, who's? It's um, Josie. It might be the wrong question. I oh, is it? Ahead. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, my one. oh, dear, baby. I <laughs> can't. <laughs> oh, Lizzie, thanks for coming. <laughs> That's all right. There's always some sort of technical problem. <laughs> it just adds to the fun. <laughs> okay, what's so, the question? With this question number four, whose leg is this? So do you think it's a beetle's leg or a bee's leg? Or maybe a spider leg? Or is it Lizzie's leg? Hmm. <laughs> Lizzie, show us your leg. I want to see and compare, please. I cannot stretch that far, thank you very much. <laughs> Maybe it is Lizzie's leg, everyone. She's refusing to show us, so it could just be a clue. <laughs> All right, nearly everybody's voted. We'll give you a little bit longer. <laughs> People in the chat think that's quite funny. 
Oh. There's always a silly answer every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> or is it not silly? We just don't know. <laughs> All right. Time's up, everyone. Let's see. Here are the results. Ooh. We've got a wow. good selection this time. Okay. So the three B is people most think it's yours, yours like. <laughs> yeah, three people think it's yours. <laughs> I'm going to say no, guys, I'm afraid, but <laughs> good for trying. <laughs> so the most popular answer was a bee, but quite a lot we also thought it was a spider or a beetle. So what is the answer, Katie? It is a bee leg. Ooh, well done if you got that, guys. Good job for trying. Oh, what a gorgeous picture of a bumblebee. I think that might be an early bumblebee. Might be. Another species that you wouldn't necessarily think would be very reliant on hedgerows, but not only do hedgerows provide a fantastic source of food with nectar and pollen for bees, they also, kind of like bats, use hedgerows to navigate through the countryside and they kind of use them like bee highways to find where all the food is and keep going back that way and using them. So another one that's really important for, for hedgerows is bees as well. Amazing. Actually, at the moment, I think you can spot if you have any hedgerows near you and not just hedgerows. Blackthorn has beautiful white flowers out at the moment. And that's where you might see some bees who are starting to emerge getting pollen. So that's something to always look out for at this time of year. Not just the hazel catkins, but those beautiful little white flowers. OK, right. Next one. OK, you'll have to tell me if I've got the right question this time. <laughs> All right, let's see. Is this the right one? Yes. <laughs> yes. There we go. Who has nibbled this nut? So remember, you can move the um, poll box if you want to, to take a closer look. Now, the, uh, uh, the answers could be <laughs> a squirrel, a dormouse, a rat, or a vole. So which one of those has chewed or nibbled this nut? That's a really tricky one, isn't it, this one? We've got quite equal votes coming in because it really is a challenge. So my clue would be to think about our theme of this, of this whole quiz and use that as a clue. That's my, that's my little tip for everybody. See if it changes the vote. I really enjoyed whoever just put, it's a Lizzie. <laughs> <laughs> I was a bit peckish. I think that was Michael. <laughs> Hazelnuts <laughs> are very tasty, actually, so I wouldn't blame you, but that is very neat for a Lizzie nut. I, I can't imagine you're that good at carefully nibbling them. Definitely not. I think I need much smaller teeth to get it to that. <laughs> well, everyone's voted, so let's have a look what they said. Amazing. Wow. Well done. Yeah, so most of you said a dormouse which is incredible because that is the answer so good job if you did get that and well done for giving it a go if not so this is what a dormouse will look like and you can move the picture of us as well if it's in the way because you want to take a look at this it is the cutest thing in the world <laughs> oh little fluffy oh. belly i want to give it tickles oh. <laughs> So it's really interesting because often we call them the hazel dormouse and you would think then that they must be eating hazelnuts all year round, but they're actually only available in the autumn when you'll see those hazel trees with lots of nuts on them. So the rest of the year they're eating a lot of other things as well. So when they emerge from hibernation uh, at the end of winter and the beginning of spring, they have to eat what's around. So they actually eat a lot of hawthorn and blackthorn flowers, like those beautiful little flowers you just mentioned, Lizzie. And that's what they eat when they first emerge out of hibernation. And then as the season goes on through spring into summer, they'll eat ash seeds, also known as ash keys, but also wild honeysuckle flowers and even small insects they can find like aphids, and then as they're going into the autumn and they're wanting to put on lots of fat reserves before they go back into hibernation, they'll eat lots of blackberries and of course, hazelnuts. Nice. And they make that special pattern, don't they? So you can see the smooth inside on the case there and then lots of nibbled edges around the side. So if you guys ever go on a walk and you find hazelnuts that have been nibbled, it's always good to look at the hole that's been made and if they've got that lovely smooth inside there that's probably a dormouse so that's always a fun sort of detective thing I like to do on a walk sometimes <laughs> amazing thank you Katie do you want to do the next one yes so 
whose bottom is this? Is it a caterpillar bottom, a butterfly bottom, a moth bottom, or a dragonfly bottom? We always Another go for the, uh, the best questions, I think. I think everyone will appreciate this question. It doesn't <laughs> look like the comfiest bottom to sit on. It's very spiky, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You don't really think of bottoms being spiky very often. No, and we didn't put Lizzie as an option this time for very tactical reasons. I hope everyone appreciates that. <laughs> <laughs> Fairly even voting so far. A lot of different people making a good guess. It must be a difficult one when everybody's guessing something different. We, we've got a challenging one because, as you know, everyone, we've got very little people in our Explorers Club and we've got much older people in our Explorers Club. So we do make the questions different levels of difficulty, don't we? Right, everyone's voted. Let's see. Oh, you're right. There was a sort of a clear um, voting for three main groups. So moth, caterpillar and, caterpillar and butterfly were the popular ones, but butterfly just inches ahead. That's got a few more votes. So shall we see if they're right? Hey, well done, Hi. butterfly. <laughs> What sort of butterfly is it, Katie? This is a brown hair streak butterfly and it gets its name. So you can see in the picture on the right, that kind of white line that runs up the underside of the wing, that's what gives its name a hair streak. So a brown hair streak. And these are a real hedgerow butterfly. So they're really difficult to see, they're quite secretive. But if you really examine hedgerows in the summer, and look out for hawthorn, so a spiky plant, then you might see this brown butterfly flitting around or even a female laying her teeny tiny white eggs on hawthorn branches. So oh, amazing, I'm gonna look out for them. I also love their stripy antennae and legs if you take a closer look. It's not like you get to see that every day and get that closer butterfly, so that's awesome. Yeah, they're beautiful, really pretty. Right. <laughs> nose is this? Is it a weasel, a mink, a hedgehog or a fox? Now remember we're talking about hedgerows here so what might you use a hedgerow? That could be a massive clue and it could be a bit of a trick clue so you've got mm -hmm. to decide now more than what you think it is it's probably a decision on how much you trust Lizzie's clues isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Very fun. Let's see. We've got votes pouring in. Wow, you guys are so quick at voting. It's amazing. We've got some nice comments. I think Ella says, I like peacock butterflies. Me too. They're really pretty. Oh, and Eleni has asked, what is a mink? Which is a really good question. Ooh, we have something called an American mink here in the UK. And it's like a, it's a bigger mammal than a hedgehog. And it's not spiky like a hedgehog. It's got fur. And they're pretty good at catching other animals they're pretty good predators and things that you don't get to see them very often they're quite secretive um and they like to swim and things too so they're they're pretty cool i've never seen one in the wild never seen one i have i've seen one in the wild and they <gasps> look a little bit like a small dark ferret to give you an idea of what they mm, nice. funnily enough i mistook it for an otter when i first saw it because i saw it swimming and i was like an otter and then I realised it was actually an American thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Amazing. really good answers and really good questions, everyone. Thanks, guys. Ollie says he's seen a mink. Lucky you. All right, <sighs> so let's see. Here's our results, everybody. <laughs> so most of you guys said hedgehog, and you know what? It wouldn't be a quiz about hedges without <laughs> of a hedgehog. It's where they get their name, guys. Uh, Lucy, I swear <laughs> you're obsessed. <laughs> no, I just I just like them. That's all. <laughs> I don't blame you. They are gorgeous. How do you hedgehogs use hedgerows, Katie? Well, hedgehogs, even though they're covered in spikes, 
they're actually still quite secretive and want to avoid predators, even though they're covered in their own protection. So hedgehogs will use hedgerows to hide away, again, like a little corridor through the countryside as protection, as well as finding food. Because obviously at the base of a hedge, you've got lots of dead leaves, lots of bark and a bit damper. And so there'll be lots of their favourite foods as well, like insects and slugs and snails. So really important for hedgehogs. But the best hedgerow for a hedgehog is one with not many gaps in it because hedgehogs don't like to go into big open spaces like a big field. So if a hedgerow is well connected up, then they'll prefer it to move around safely through the countryside. Amazing. So if you had them in your garden, you might find that a hedgehog maybe might even nest in the hedgerow that you've got in your garden. And I know we don't all have hedges in our gardens, we might have fences. So that's why it's super important that we always have those little holes for hedgehogs to get through. So it's like their way of their little corridor to get to safety as well. Amazing. I think we've got our last one. So there it is. So last question, whose jaws are these? Do you think they belong to an earwig, a spider, a stag beetle or a scorpion? <laughs> They look amazing. Honestly, I don't mind what they are, but I don't think I'd poke my finger anywhere near them personally. No. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of answers coming in. We've got, Michael says they're Lizzie's jaws. I think we have a theme here. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I wish I had jaws like that. That's so <laughs> Do you know, we've had no votes for spiders yet. Nobody thinks it's a spider. I'm not sure that's ever happened before where we've had not a single vote for something, but everyone has voted. So let's see what they did vote for. Nice. OK, so there's a pretty clear win for this one. And most of you guys said stag beetle. And I think you might be right. There we go. I wish I have seen, I haven't seen one of these yet and I would love to see one. They're incredible. I have and they're the greatest thing in the world. One <laughs> flew over my head and it sounds like a helicopter. Like, and honestly, I was running around the garden, very excited. Everyone I live with thought I was absolutely mad, but it was the best day of my life. <laughs> it's good to I point out as well them. that, um, you, you don't live in the countryside, do you, Josie? You lived quite near town and things. So no, I live in Woking, which isn't very countryside -y, so they're around. Cool. They are. They're incredible stag beetles, and you can see them all over the place. So we're lucky in Surrey that there's quite a lot of them around, and you will quite easily find them in your gardens. And what's really interesting about stag beetles is that their grubs live underground for up to seven years before they emerge like a big stag beetle like this. But if you want to encourage stag beetles into your garden, then they're really reliant on deadwood. So creating a little deadwood pile and even burying some of that deadwood will really help to encourage them to come out into your garden. And again, they love hedgerows because at the base of hedges, there's lots of deadwood and lots of material for them to go rifling around and find food in as well. Amazing. Amazing. Loads of people in the chat have seen them. Samantha <gasps> saw one and she oh, loves them. Great. Josh and Zoe have seen one in their house. Can you imagine that? Izzy has seen millions. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Wow. Tyler's brother saw one. Oli saw one last year. You lucky people. And Ruby. Amazing. So keep your eyes out in, what is it, midsummer when they come out. Is that right? Yeah, around then. Perfect. Amazing, guys. Awesome. Fingers crossed for this summer. How exciting would that be? Yes. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Hopefully you can see all of us again. I've never seen one either, so that not everyone gets to see one. Hopefully we will this summer. Keep your eyes peeled, definitely. Amazing. Okay, thank you for that, Katie. Do you fancy staying on and helping us with the craft and things? Yes, please. Okay, so our craft this week is something we pretty much all of us have probably done, but it's really important. It is to plant a seed. One of my favorite things to do when spring comes is to plant a seed. And my one that I will be planting today is a sunflower seed. And they're pretty big, so I'm just gonna show you this one. What are you gonna plant, Katie? I'm gonna plant some cucumbers for my garden and maybe some beans as well. <sighs> Amazing. Now we like planting seeds for wildlife and you wouldn't think that 
cucumber or beans are, are good for wildlife, but actually they are incredible. They have beautiful flowers that come out that are pollinators like our bees and our butterflies or like, so it's really cool. And then I think you might end up liking to eat them. Am I right, Katie? <laughs> yes, definitely. Because like you say, the, the flowers are food for wildlife and then we get to eat the beans and the cucumbers. Nice. And I like sunflowers. I've never grown a sunflower before. If you have, or if you've grown anything, let us know in the chat, guys. We'd love to hear what sort of things you like to grow if you've done it, whether at home or at school. But I've never grown a sunflower and I always love them. They are beautiful whenever you see them in the summer. And pollinators like our bees and butterflies will like them. And then I'm going to leave them in the autumn time or late summer once they've been pollinated and their seeds are there because then apparently birds love to eat the seeds. So they're really cool. Okay, so what you need for this, as you can guess, is some seeds. So you can get a little packet. Mine looks like this, and it's got really helpful instructions on the back. You need a container to put them in, and you don't have to buy plant pots to put them in. You can use lots of things that you find at home, whether it's an egg box like this, you could use an old toilet roll if you want. And you can also use old containers for fruit and tomatoes and things. I think I've got one from grapes, which we had a while ago. So I'm gonna use that one. What are you gonna use, Katie? I'm going to use an old sweet corn can and a chopped tomato can, and maybe even a little tray that I had for avocados. Oh, nice. There's lots of options. And once you've got those, you also need a little bit of soil for your seeds. So as you would probably guess, we're going to fill the container with some soil. I'm just going to move my camera down a little bit so you can see. We've got some lovely different suggestions in the chat, Lizzie. We've okay. got uh, Aiden planted chives. Elliot used to grow stuff like beans and flowers and berries and potatoes. And Jonathan and Asha say that we had loads of bean flowers last year, but the insects loved the marigolds most, which is really nice. And mm. Eleni's growing squashes and tomatoes. I think the uh, vegetables might be the popular choice here because not only does the wildlife benefit, but then we get to benefit too. So I can understand that choice. It's so much fun watching fruit and vegetables grow as well. See when you've planted it from seed and you think that tiny little seed creates such big fruit and vegetables sometimes. It's magical. And not isn't just it? that, I love the little seedlings that appear to begin with. You know, when you planted your seed and you just see that little bit of green pop through the soil, that is my favourite bit of all. That is the best bit. Just watching it grow, no matter how big. Okay, so once you've filled your pot with soil like this, you then want to make a little hole for your seed. And it's always good to check on the packet because different seeds like different depths in the soil. And my little sunflower seeds just here, like 1.5 centimetres. So I'm going to estimate that one and make little holes as I go and put them in there. To make little holes. Oh, that's a good idea. And it's always good to put in a few more than you think you need because sometimes they don't all grow. But I'm going to put these in my garden when I'm done. But you don't need a garden to do this. It's a really fun activity to do indoors. And then if you've got a balcony or just a window, you can put them outside there. Okay. Karina, says, Karina says, I had a sunflower two years ago and it was enormous. And wow. Ruby, Ruby says, my cat eats flowers and vegetables that, and fruit that I grow. So how can, we, how can we stop our pets getting into these if we do put them outside? Um, I think there's some sort of, uh, what is it called? Kind of like a wire that you could put around, but it can be big enough for bees to get in and things. So you can still get your insects that you want attracted to those flowers, but it will stop the bigger animals like your cats coming in. So it's always good to have a look at that as an option. Because I know some pets can be very cheeky. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Josh and Zoe have cherry trees and plum trees. Oh, that must be really tasty. Oh, lovely. Wow. I bet they must look so pretty at the moment as well. Probably covered oh, yeah. them. Gorgeous. Okay, so once you put all your seeds in, maybe you can see the little holes I made. You can then cover it lightly with soil. 
And if you remember from school, seeds need a few things to grow. So they need um, nutrients from the soil. That's really important. They need um, warmth and sunlight. So when you're finished, you can put these on your windowsill that gets lots of sun. That's a perfect place to put them. And of course, they need water. So that's what I'm going to do in a second. Now, some of the pots that you might have will have holes in the bottom. And to stop water going everywhere once I pour it in, I'm going to put mine on a little plate, just like that. So if water goes into the soil and drops out the bottom, it won't go all over my desk <laughs> or windowsill, wherever you put it. Oh, amazing. It also, I love getting my hands dirty with this. It's always fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting very dirty doing mine. <laughs> So once you're ready and you've got your um, seeds in, you then gently uh, water the soil. You want it to be moist, um, but not soaking, soaking wet. And then you just keep it, keep an eye on it and you can add water over the coming sort of days and weeks. And hopefully we'll start to see little green shoots. Okay, so that is mine. It's not the prettiest of crafts, but it is an important one. And you can always decorate your containers around the outside if you want. That's always fun to do. And you can always add label, uh, little sticks, you know, like an ice lolly stick. You can clean that and then you can decorate it and put what you've grown on there. So you can write sunflower or chives or whatever it is you grow. You can put that there to mark and remind you what you've got in the, in the tray. Alice in the chat says that she has a cactus, which is a really nice idea. And I like the thought that, of course, if you don't have that outdoor space or a garden, you could grow plants that are better and happier living indoors. And as you can see in Katie's video, she's got some lovely indoor plants and I'm a bit obsessed too. I have plants everywhere. So because I don't have a garden, I've just filled my house with plants. So it's a really good idea too. And cacti is a really good choice. Lovely. So hopefully we can Ask this one to grow really well. And then yours, Katie. Amazing. Yeah, ask mine to grow too, please. <laughs> <laughs> they do say that talking to your plants helps them to grow better. So maybe that's what we should be doing. I'll do the right thing then. I check mine my plants. Well. <laughs> Amazing. So that's what you guys can do. It's the perfect time to do it now as well. There's lots of um, plants that you can start growing from seed, like the ones we've done today but also tomatoes you might want to try. I heard someone said they planted chives already and you can still do them. And they have lovely little purple flowers on top. So they're good for bees. And things like rosemary and other herbs are amazing to smell and also eat sometimes and great for wildlife too. So let us know if you do end up planting some seeds guys and hopefully you get to put them outside somewhere. Let us know, we love to hear all your stories about what you do. But that is our craft this week and it nicely leads on to our challenge for the week. Everyone likes a challenge so I'm going to share my screen. I also see in the chat that lots of people grow lizzies and I didn't realise there was a plant called a lizzie. Uh, by lots of people you mean one particular person called Michael. Oh, <laughs> there is a there is a plant called a busy lizzie and it is actually very pretty because we used to have that in my garden when i was little and they were one of my favorites so busy lizzies mm, you have to look them up <laughs> but it's always good if you can guys to plant a few different types there's lots of a few different flowers about in your garden or if you just got a little bit of patio or you've just got a balcony or even a windowsill because our challenge for you this week is to help our pollinators they are so important not just for us but for plants about three quarters of plants around the world or flowering plants rely on insects and pollinators. So that's a lot of them that need them to help them grow and pollinate and create seeds. And not only that, about a third of the plants that we grow to eat need insects as well. So they are so important for us and wildlife that we need to help them out a bit. And there's a few things you can do to help them. The first one is of course to plant some seeds and to have some flowers wherever you are. There's some examples of what you can do on the screen, get, screen there, guys. You could have a window box, so one to put outside your window. You, if you've got just fencing, you can add 
some um, pots to put on your fence. You can just have pots on the ground, hanging baskets, or even old shoes sometimes, which I think is pretty cool. <laughs> I love doing that to wellies and old shoes. It's such a good way to use them and it can be really colourful and nice in your garden. That sounds, that's a brilliant idea. I might actually look into that. I've got an old pair of wellies that could be used for that. Amazing. And if you've got a bit of grass, I know not everyone does, but if you do, maybe you could turn it into a little wildflower patch, even the smallest bit, one, cent, one meter squared, and look at all the pretty flowers that you could grow in that. So that's a really good way to help our insects is to have some wildflowers somewhere. But not only do they need flowers, our pollinators in the summer, when it's really warm, they still need water. So if you guys were here for Water Week, we did mention this, having a shallow bowl with lots of little rocks in is great for the bees to go and take a quick drink while they're flying around, hopping over to all the different pl plants. And also, you can make a bug hotel or an insect home with old things like sticks or even bamboo. I've got some here. I'm going to make one um, when I get a chance. So you can do these and they're for things like bees, uh, solitary bees who will go into the little hole and they'll lay an egg and then they might seal it up with a bit of leaves or a bit of mud, depending on what type of bee it is. And then they might lay another one in there as well and keep going all the way up to the end. And it's really fun to watch them go in and out and fill it up for their eggs to grow. So it's really good to help them. Maybe you've got one already in your garden, guys. Okay, so that's your challenge is to help our pollinators. And we'll send you that sheet as well of how to help insects, so don't worry at all. And we'll send you a link to so other ideas and plants that you can grow that will help our insects throughout the year. So you get lots of information and your parents get lots of information too. So that is our challenge, guys. Hopefully you are up for the challenge of growing something. It doesn't have to be this week, but if you get a plan, maybe go out and get some seeds, that would be amazing. Right, I think it's everyone's favourite section now. It is Sound of the Week. I will right, Lizzie. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> we need our introduction. Do you think Katie might be able to do our little fanfare trumpet for us this week as a special guest honour? <gasps> Would you like to? The trumpet. What do I have to do? I'll do an example for you. <laughs> <laughs> so you can give it a go. Can you, can you do that? Can you do it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. It is sound of the week. And this week's sound is a bird that you might spot a lot near hedgerows, especially in the countryside. It is a uh, yellow hammer. Look at how beautiful that bird is. I love a yellow hammer. So beautiful. And the sound is pretty awesome too. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Take a look at this guy, guys. Take a look at how beautiful and yellow it is because the sound is going to come up very shortly. Okay, Amazing. ready, Josie? Yeah, so I'm going to share this for you now. So let me just get this going. This is one of the first sounds, uh, first bird songs, I suppose, that I ever learned. So make sure your speakers are turned up. I warn you now, if your pets are going to go wild, then this is the moment to prepare. So are we ready? Mine might go wild, we'll see. <laughs> So that sound is one that means a lot to me. My dad taught me that sound and there's a way to remember it, which is kind of silly, but that's why you remember it so well. And they say that it is like hearing someone saying a little bit of bread and no cheese. And <laughs> it makes no sense. They don't eat cheese. They don't really eat bread. They are summery birds. But if you hear that in a field in the summertime, it is pretty special. So shall we do it again? And everybody can join in this time. Okay. I want to hear Lizzie do it too. <laughs> you mean a little bit of bread and no cheese? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to say it as quickly as you can. That's the, that's the difficult bit. A little bit of bread and no cheese. <laughs> a little okay. bit of bread and no cheese. Let's hear it again then. And you guys at home can give it a try as well. Try and listen out for that little pattern. All right. Are we ready? Oh, and yes. a quick question from the chat. We've been asked why are they called yellow hammers, which is a really mm -hmm. difficult question. 
and it's because the head is yellow and hammer is an old English sort of word that's it basically was related to their heads I don't think the word means that but it's similar to that word ready it's amazing Are you doing it, everyone? I was thinking about it, yes. <laughs> I could say that. <laughs> it is quite piercing, especially if your speakers are on loud. I understand that. But actually, when you're out in the wild, it's beautiful. Where do they live, these birds? So the reason this is our sound of the week is because this is a really lovely bird that you often find in a hedgerow. But you're, unless you're really lucky, it probably won't be in your garden or your park hedgerow. You're more likely to find them in a hedgerow in the countryside or in farmland. And they're a really classic sound that you can hear out on a summer's day when you're walking in the countryside and they might be sat. If you're lucky and spot them, you've got to look out for that yellow head sat on the top of the hedge, singing about cheese at the top of their lungs. Amazing. We do, I think there's some um, suggestions to play one more time. So in case you didn't hear us, guys, it sounds oh. like a little bit of bread and no cheese. <laughs> I will just get back to sharing one second because we are actually running over, Lizzie. So last, last one, and then we've got okay. to finish. Okay, here we go. All right, I'm being mean now because that is genuinely all we have time for. If you want that to hear is. it more, then you can just Google it, get on the internet and search for Yellow Hammer Song, and that sound will come up because it is so well known and well loved. And then go out in the summertime into beautiful fields and hedges near you and have a listen because you might well get lucky on a gorgeous summer's day. It just makes me like smell summer, that sound. It's lovely. All right. So that really is all we have time for. So I need to wrap up very quickly. We have the usual things to say. I, of course, will send you all an email tomorrow. And with that, we'll become we'll have some instructions for the challenge we will have some instructions for the craft and different things you can do to help wildlife and pollinators near you um, make sure you sign up for next week it's really important the link changes every week so you have to sign up for each one not just one of them and tell all your friends about it what's our theme next week oh nocturnal animals so that yes. should be really fun i'm really excited for that one uh, and of course as i mentioned before day of the dinosaurs is coming soon to the internet and you can join for free you should definitely tell your parents to sign you up for that before it's too late now a massive thank you to katie for being our wonderful expert guest today we love you thank you katie thank, thank you. you very much for having me it's been so much fun perfect and now it is time for our gallery i've got some really lovely things to share from the gallery this week so i'm going to share that now turn off my screen and let my lovely friends say goodbye themselves so goodbye from me everybody <laughs> Hi guys, thank you for coming and thank you for all your lovely messages. We hope to see you next week. And again, thank you, Katie, for joining us for our plant session. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And I hope everyone enjoyed learning a little bit about hedgerows and the species that call it home. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye, Bye guys.